Hey, Crash Test here, and welcome to a gameplay stroke mini review of NCAA Basketball on the SNES, a game that isn't really rare or desirable or hard to get, but is it any good? Well, let's find out. Yeah, that's about it for the intro screen, which is pretty typical for most uh, sports games to be honest. You've got one player or two player exhibition, and then you've got the normal uh, season which takes you into March Madness with the Final Four. So I've picked the uh, the two teams of the most stupid mascots. Yeah, the only options you really get is to set the length of the half and the difficulty level. Or uh, pick easy, of course. <laughs> Bulldogs against the Wolfpack. Excellent. Okay, oh, that's jump. Right, who am I? Uh, right, I'm the Whites. So the first thing you'll realise is that, well, there's no crowd in this game, which is a bit of an oversight really. I think the last game I played was NBA Give and Go, and that was a pretty decent uh, basketball game to be honest. The crowd, you know, really helped with the atmosphere. And uh, the commentator's voice really helped to create a you know, pretty believable environment. Every now and again in the top left you'll see the mascot logo change. That's, uh, I'm changing the formation on the fly. I think the seven offensive and seven defensive formations court violation sounds painful but that's actually a, a good bonus for the game you can just change things you know on the fly when you uh, desire Foul center. you've got your normal controls pass shoot block steal jump I think there's four types of dunks where you can hang left or right, or one-handed or two-handed, but it generally does lack the razzmatazz of more, well, more familiar NBA games on the snares. It is quite hard as well to uh, score, so you will have to put a fair bit amount of practice in. You can see from the logos above the players' heads, the arrow just points to the person you are, you're controlling. And there's various options you can set to, you know, who you control and whether it's auto-assigned or not. And obviously it's got the positions above your own players. And if the icon's red, it means it's very risky to pass to them. And then there's yellow and then there's green, which are less risky options. But obviously because players are always on the move, you don't really always want to go by the colours on the head. Just use your eyes and... Uh, a bit of common sense. Rejected. Yeah, rejected. It's quite hard to manoeuvre yourself past the opposition and again it's quite hard to block so it might be worthwhile spending time to study the opposition's formation, set your team up accordingly so at least you stand a greater chance of being able to block or steal the ball or, you know, or just generally get in the way. Oh, come on, it's pretty close, 10 9. Power forward. Excellent. I think if they made the court smaller and sped up the game and just put even a static crowd in and a few better um, sound effects, it could have been a half decent game. Added a bit more flamboyance in the dunking, then yeah, it could have been half decent. and made it slightly easier to score <laughs> as the computer demonstrates yeah, they do it really easy but yeah I struggle I'm not even going to try a three pointer because I know I'm not going to get in <laughs> I 
Overall, I'd rate this game a mediocre 5 out of 10. Although you can change offensive and defensive formations on the fly, there's various options regarding fast breaks so you can catch up with your opponents when they're out in the open and about to score, and players can be told to crash the boards and pick up on rebounds. It, it just feels like a poor man's NBA give and go without all the fun. Add to that a lack of game modes, no real customization, and a lack of uh, multi-tap compatibility just leaves you with a distinctively average game. March Madness, well, you'd be mad to play this at any time of the year. Avoid. Yeah, and it looks like I might actually win. Come on. Three seconds, yeah, I should win. <sighs> Bastards. <laughs> 